This video is gonna be a little bit different. It's more of a discussion topic, but I still think there's plenty in here for you to take away, perhaps learn, and maybe even ask more questions. Last week, Sinn Féin spokesperson for housing stated that a recent report showed that housing could be built for 160,000 euro less if a developer was not involved. Or what I actually think he said was if a developer was eliminated from the process. This got me thinking, was this actually really the case or was this just Sinn Féin's spin on a report for their own interests? So in today's video, I'm gonna review the difference between public housing and private housing and to see if there's any major cost difference in delivering either of them. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Shane Fleming. I'm a chartered property consultant. I use this channel to share information on the property market in general. And I also sometimes go into creating videos and what it's actually like to work in property. So if you're interested in any of those topics, make sure you subscribe to this channel. Today, for those of you who do know me, I'm actually shooting on a new camera and I have a new mic system set up. So hopefully you will notice the difference. I am just getting it set up and I'm not familiar with all the functions that either the mic has or the camera has, so bear with me, but hopefully this video is an improvement on recent videos. If it is an improvement, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and even put a comment below to let me know if it's getting any better or perhaps it's even worse now. So first off, let's address Sinn Féin's, um, Owner Breen's comment in regards to eliminating developers from the home building process would save 160,000 euro per house. I take a bit of offense at this uh, statement or I have a few issues with this statement. I think first off, uh, I think it kind of suggests that we don't need developers. It also suggests that profit is possibly a bad thing. And it also suggests, I think, that developers are making 160,000 euro per house in profit, which is not the case. I actually believe profit is a good thing. It's a good thing for a whole host of reasons, but one, you can tax profit, it pays wages. It also, profit is a motivating factor for many people and many companies to build and create more. Without profit, I don't want to even imagine what kind of society we would actually live in. Perhaps it might look like something like Russia, but who knows? I believe private developers deserve to make a profit on the risks that they take, especially if they calculate those risks correctly and gauge the market correctly. There's a huge amount of risks that developers have to take and there's so much things that can go wrong with a development. Generally speaking, a large development, a residential development can take anywhere between two to five years to actually from planning it to getting it sold. And so much could go wrong within that period of time. There could be interest rate fluctuations, there could be issues with planning, um, there could be issues with bill costs, there could be poor ground conditions. Anything that goes wrong during the construction phase or the planning phase can wipe out a developer's profit. So for the sake of this video, let's assume that we're talking about a three bed semi-detached. Let's say a three bed semi-detached in Dublin at the moment, the average price is somewhere around 420. The average bill costs right now are in the region of about 380. That leaves a profit of about 40,000 before tax. And that's on a good day, assuming nothing has gone wrong. And as I said, so many things can actually go wrong when you're developing. In my mind, a profit before tax of 30 to 40,000 per unit on a project that could take two to five years is not a massive reward given the amount of risks that are actually taken. And I think that is one of the main reasons why we don't see a huge amount of new homes being built at the moment. Just the risks are too great at the moment and interest uh, rates that you can get to build homes are too high. I do not think uh, politicians or the general public need to be too hard on people who are taking these risks. And by I'm, what I mean by people, I mean developers who are actually taking these huge risks to deliver new homes. I think it's unfair to be massively critical on a developer who makes a profit. Some people might come down on me and say, well, some homes in Dublin sell for far more, and that is correct. Um, and they might be assuming that developers are making much bigger of a profit. But generally speaking, if the homes are being sold for more, it's because the land costs actually cost more too. But in most cases right now, with land costs in Dublin being so expensive, 
um, in most cases, developers are making kind of anywhere between kind of 10 and 12% profit. And that's 10 or 12% on a project that they've taken huge risks on and could have taken two to three years. So let's get back to the public housing. So how is there a saving of 160,000 if we remove the developer from the process? Well, actually looking at it, I think the saving could be far more in money terms. And this is why. Generally speaking, public and social housing is 20 to 25 square meters smaller than your private built homes. That means if you were uh, on an average using a build cost of 1,500 square meters for your construction costs, if you're building it 20 to 25 square meters smaller, this is a saving of 35,000 euro. The next saving is local council contributions. The average uh, council contribution for a new home in Dublin at the moment stands at about 14,000. If the council are building these homes themselves, these contributions aren't required. So it's a further 14,000 saving. If the homes aren't being sold on the private market, developers don't have to engage with an estate agent or solicitor to sell those homes. Therefore, there will probably be an average saving of about 8,000 per unit. If developer isn't involved, their profit isn't required. So therefore, take another 40,000 out of it. Another big saving for the council in terms of building these homes would be finance costs. Generally speaking, a developer is going to have to finance the land and finance the construction. And this could be over a two to three year period. On average, finance costs for building a home or three bed semi right now over that kind of period would be in and around 40 grand. So what kind of savings do we have now before we even think about VAT or land costs? We have 35,000 because it's a smaller home. We have 14,000 because we don't have uh, local council contributions. We've 8,000 because we don't need a solicitor or a state agent. We've another 40,000 because there's no developer profit. Another 40,000 because there's no finance costs. When you add all that up together, you come to a total savings of 137,000. So that's before you even add in the savings for VAT and land costs. Let's make the assumption that these public and social homes will be built on public land. Therefore, there's no land costs. Right now, you can buy a plot uh, anywhere in a rural town for about 15,000, but if you're talking about Dublin, you're up at 60 to 100,000. But let's take, for argument's sake, that in this example, we're using a Dublin site and we put a plot value at 75,000. When you add that in to the savings you've already got, you're up at a total savings of 212,000. This would actually bring your construction costs for public housing per unit to 180,000. But I actually don't think this reflects reality at all. In reality, the councils do not have the experience, the expertise, or to even the motivation to actually deliver large-scale housing. Development is a very complicated task, and most people aren't actually up to that task, and hence why there's very few successful developers long-term. I've seen loads of examples where the council have just sat on sites where they actually have planning for public housing. They've sat on these sites for nine, 10 years, it's not like the housing crisis hasn't been with us for years, but they've sat on these sites for years and have only actually recently started to construct the, um, projects on these sites. You have to ask yourself why the council are so slow in actually delivering housing. But when you look at it in more detail, it's because of the bureaucracy they have within each council, also their procedures for procurement. It just adds to the process and a lot of times it can take five plus years to deliver some social housing. These delays for delivering social housing within the councils can sometimes take five years plus and the costs associated with those delays or the lost opportunities with those delays aren't actually factored into the cost of delivering the house itself and it's certainly not reflected in the costs that I've given within this video. What actually happens in reality is the state and the council waste vast amount of money on schemes like the HAP scheme, where they should really be building. The council's desperate need in recent years to provide social housing has led them to overpay developers for completed buildings that were meant for the private market. 
This is a complete waste of taxpayers' money and it also leads to reduced supply for the private market and pushes up prices even further. Recent stats suggest that the state and housing bodies were responsible for nearly 50% of the homes acquired in Q2 of this year. This further increases housing prices for the private market. I'm not against social or public housing. I actually think the state need to do more of it and they should be aiming to do more of it. What I am against is the current situation that we have the state competing with the private market. It's just wrong for the state to be competing with the private market and pushing prices even higher and higher. I'm also against the HAP scheme because what it actually does it is that it inflates rents in certain areas of the country. We do need private developers and we do need uh, state-backed uh, housing development uh, to solve the problem, the housing problem that we do face right now, but they just can't be competing with each other. To solve this housing crisis, we need to be creative. We need to continue to build higher and higher in central locations. We shouldn't be building in green fields consistently. It's not sustainable and it's definitely not environmental. As I said, not everyone wants social housing. I would say the majority of people actually just want affordable homes. To create affordable homes, we need to be providing creative solutions. And those creative solutions involve increased densities, higher buildings, also changing our building regs to allow for different options, to allow different uh, options for where people can live and how they live. I don't think everyone or every family fits into a three bed semi. The trend is actually going for smaller homes and we just don't have enough smaller homes here in Ireland. By creating smaller homes, we actually allow people get on the housing market sooner because they're more affordable. We also have to stop the state from competing against private buyers. We need to phase out the HAP scheme over the next few years. It, in my mind, it's just a waste of money from a social housing point of view. Even if you look at it this year, we are going to, or the state is going to be spending nearly uh, or 500 million this year in HAP payments. Using um, Honor Breen's calculation on how much it costs to deliver or public housing, you could build nearly um, 2,500 houses a year using that money. Every time we protect a view or protect a street line or a building that is no longer fit for purpose, we actually increase the value of land outside the city. And this makes it less and less affordable for people to live near a city. Look at it this way. Every floor we decide to limit on a future development within a city could mean that there's 20 families that can't live within the city and they have to live outside the city and commute in every day, adding to further congestion within a city. Some buildings definitely do need to be protected, but I don't think our ideology of protection should get in the way of our future or our current housing needs. You may agree or disagree with me on these points, but I do believe building up is one of the best ways we can solve our current housing issues. I do not believe demonizing developers or profit is a way to go for our country in terms of trying to solve this problem. Council homes can be delivered for far less than the private market can deliver because they don't have to pay uh, finance costs, they don't have to include developers' profit, they don't have to uh, allow for VAT and they do not have to allow for planning contributions. And also, generally speaking, they're built to a, a lower spec. All of this definitely adds up to savings. But in my mind, there is a lot of hidden costs associated with the bureaucracy and the processes that councils actually have in place. Hidden costs that aren't included in the overall costs that we've discussed here today, but there definitely are costs to the taxpayer. There are loads of examples of massive cost overruns on lots of state uh, construction projects. As I said, I'm not against social housing. I do think it's very important. Uh, public housing is definitely something that the government need to prioritize, but they need a better strategy uh, compared to what they're doing. They need a long-term strategy rather than something that's just gonna get them votes in the next year or two. They need to look at this from a much longer perspective if they're going to achieve anything. I would love to hear your thoughts on the topic, so put any comments or questions below. 
as always i hope you enjoyed this video i hope you may see a better picture or better sound within this video like as i said if you did give us this video a thumbs up or put a comment below if, if i'm still really off on the sound and again as always thanks for watching